What's up guys, Joe at Driven Films here, and today I'm back with the third and final episode of the Cadillac CTSV Breakdown. This is a part of my How to Film Cars Like a Pro series, so if you've missed them, go back and watch the editing breakdown as well as the color grading breakdown for the CTSV promo. Now, we're gonna be doing all the sound design within DaVinci Resolve using the Fairlight panel. So let's jump into Resolve and break down the sound design. All right guys, now we're here in DaVinci Resolve again. And this time I'm on the Fairlight panel. And for those of you who don't know, the Fairlight panel is where you'll be doing all of your audio work, all of your mixing, all of your sound design, any of this sort of stuff. And I'm gonna jump right into it without going too in depth into Fairlight itself. I'm gonna turn off the mixer here just so I can get a little bit more timeline. And I'm gonna do this very briefly, guys. It's not gonna be too crazy. It's not gonna be too long of a video. So first I'm gonna play through the video without any music on whatsoever. But I'm gonna stop and talk to you guys about things as I get to them. So as you see here, Steve's walking to the car and my motivation behind adding these footstep gravelly sound effects is the simple fact that you see here in this shot, it is a dirt road and some of the dirt and gravel got onto the brick pavers here. So as Steve is approaching the car, I matched it up with his footsteps and I decided to keep this sound effect right here, even though we weren't on that shot of him walking, just to tie this shot together with the previous one. Now you'll also hear an atmosphere sound effect of birds and trees and wind. And I kept this just as a very subtle atmosphere beneath everything, just to just, you know, give it some background noise, you know, this way it's not just like, you know, when there's no sound effects, there's no, you know, it's not too boring. So now you'll see here as Steve opens the door, I used a open door sound effect from the Halcyon sound effects pack. And then the same thing for the door close. Now, one thing to note about sound effects and packs and stuff, you can get all sorts of free sound effects from sites like Soundstripe, Artlist. I love using Soundstripe. It's a great resource for sound effects, but I also will download and purchase sound effects packs like Halcyons or the Lens Distortion sound effect packs. These are great resources, and I'm gonna put the links to all these packs in the description below, as well as a link to Soundstripe. So again, you see him opening and closing the door, and then he clicks the button to start it. And now obviously this button doesn't make that clicking sound effect, but what this sound effect is doing is it's just, just bringing the viewer into this world and just uh, you know giving them a sense that they're right there. They're, they're up close, right? This is a very close up shot of him clicking the button, starting the car, and then that's it. Now this sound effect is pretty unique and cool. It's, it's another one from the Halcyon pack. It's the RPM going up effect. And I just soloed it so you could hear. And then I also added a whoosh click right here from Lens Distortions. And then I added a city time-lapse effect from Lens Distortion as well. Another gear shift effect from the Halcyon pack. And then I used a riser here. Tied in with a few wishes. Again, city time-lapse, swift pan. I feel that that gives the overall sequence without even adding exhaust sounds. Makes it pretty exciting. Now this city time-lapse whoosh right here accentuates the gimbal skyfall movement. I think it came out really nice. It just overall gave it a really nice feel. And then once you start adding some exhaust sounds into the mix, it ties it all together. So now you see here we added some more sound effects. Exhaust, starting the car, out of the car, rumble of the exhaust. And you'll also see here I used what's called a bass drop. And that just kind of made it like the Death Star feeling. Like if you guys recall, if you've ever seen Star Wars where, you know, the Imperial Trooper pulls the trigger on the Death Star to launch the you know, the weapon and blow up Alderaan, you know, total nerd thing there. But as you, you know, if you recall that, that shot like, had that sort of like woo, sound effect. So it's just kind of like a little homage to that. Tied in with the whooshes and I'm going to turn off the Cadillac sound effects here. Now this is one of my favorite segments of the entire video. And the reason being is because I feel like this really made me feel like I was with the car as we're passing through. So I wanted to give my viewer the sense that they're with the car right there as they're, they're passing through this, you know, tunnel of trees and 
moving really quickly. So what I did here was, let me turn all these on and solo them. I added this swift pan effect from Lens Distortions. So as you can see here on the left channel, the sound starts and then it switches to the right channel. So if you're hearing this on headphones, you'll hear in your left channel, you hear an effect, and then you'll hear it in your right channel. And the reason I used this was I wanted to you know, give the sense of movement, like we're cutting through these trees. Now, it's obviously very overdone by themselves, but once we start adding in some effects like this cold time lapse, and then we turn on the exhaust sound, it all starts coming together. So now here, you're gonna see I used a drop, city time lapse, and I also used a few whooshes as well. And these whooshes are from the sound effects pack from Lens Distortions. And then of course, the sound of the exhaust. Now this sequence is where Steve stabs the gas pedal and I used Tough Hit from the Lens Distortion effect and I also used the RPM Going Up effect that I used earlier. And that gives the viewer the sense that things are speeding up. So now once you pair all these effects together, you've got the RPM effect, you've got a hit here, you've got another time-lapse effect, a couple whooshes, a flyby whoosh, the exhaust, and then you have the supercharger wine, which is recorded separately. Things start coming together. And it transitions us nicely into the next sequence. Now, I didn't use any sound effects whatsoever besides this additional atmosphere effect. And this atmosphere is actually uh, changed from the previous one. This is distant traffic. So you hear some like vehicles in the background because right now we're underneath an overpass. You know, we're underneath the interstate highway and you know, I wanted to just have some sort of sounds. I didn't feel that there was anything motivating the use of sound effects here. So I didn't add anything. I was thinking about using something for this Zolly effect, but it just didn't seem right when I was using it. So now the way I transitioned to the next sequence was by using this sound effect of the car approaching. And I started this sound effect before we even got to the shot. And the reason for that is, is that I wanted to give the audience an audible cue that something's about to go down. So as you can see here, the car flies by and then we drop into the next scene. And the way I pulled this off was with another whoosh, another whoosh right here for the drop right there as well as the flyby sound. And you'll also see here that I faded in a lot of my sound effects. I added simple fades like this, and you could also add simple crossfades. And if someone knows the difference between using this and that, please let me know. I'd love to um, find that out. But overall, I think that that starts tying things together. Move on to the next scene, exhaust sounds. And then I added a little bit of a, um, this one's called dark range. It's like a little bit of a, like a boom. I don't even know what you'd call it, but just as if the car is coming at you. Now, one thing you may notice too, is that I'm cutting my exhaust sound effects. I'm not just letting the same exhaust sound effect ride out. I'm cutting as we get to, we switch shots. And then we move on to this shot where the car is actually approaching you. It's getting closer and closer. So I just keyframe the volume ever so slightly and it gets louder as the car approaches. You'll also see that I stacked a couple sound effects here. I used a supercharger whine that I recorded, and then I also used the exhaust sounds. One thing I do wanna add when it comes to doing sound design for car videos is the simple fact that you need to stay true to the cars. If you're filming a car with a supercharger, say a Hellcat Challenger, make sure that you include the supercharger whine because that is a very distinct aspect of that car's sound. If you're filming a Mustang, make sure you're using a Mustang sound effect, whether you record the sound yourself or whether you, you know, source some sound on your own. Um, make sure that you're using accurate sound effects because more often than not, someone who is into cars is going to call you out on that and they will know. I can tell you for a fact that many Mustang enthusiasts can pick out a Mustang sound without even seeing the car from a mile away. I kid you not. So as you can see, I'm just continuing the exhaust sound effects with the supercharger. I wanted to give it the sense that you know he is moving pretty quickly. The supercharger doesn't 
have a wine at all times. It only has a wine in particular when you're, you know, you're actually giving it gas. You're, you know, it does have a little bit of a whistle, but just again, stay accurate. Don't just use a supercharger sound just because you can. For instance, you may not even hear it right here because you start to hear them when you're, you know, a little closer or you hear it a lot more when the car is under wide open throttle. So if you are doing stuff like this, just try and research the cars and, you know, watch some YouTube videos and see how the cars sound in real life and use that as your sound motivation. Now, this last sequence of sound effects here that I'm going to break down was something that I wanted to end the video on like a really powerful note. So I used a combination of hits and sub drops and uh, an effect called piano stab, as well as the exhaust sound itself. So I made sure that I got a clip of the car as it flies by, as you can see. And then I'm gonna break this down sound effect by sound effect one at a time. And then you can hear here the whoosh. And the whoosh is very subtle. So then I add the sub drop and it helps transition into the logo. And then I add piano stab, which adds some drama. And that drama just ties in with the, uh, and that piano stab just ties in with the camera shake effect that I added. Then we add the exhaust. And then I add one more sound effect, another whoosh. That whoosh is actually motivated by the cart passing us right there. So that's it for the sound design aspect. Those are all the sound effects that I used. I do want to touch on one more thing, and that's the actual music bed. And oftentimes you have a video in mind. Let's say you have to do a 30 second video for an Instagram post, you know, for a car show, and you have this song that you want to use, but unfortunately that song is three minutes long. So what you could do is you can go into Adobe Audition, and I've already got the track loaded up into a multi-track session, and this is the very same track that I used in the video. It's called Breakpoint, and that's off of Soundstripe. All you have to do is click your track in the multi-track session, and then enable remix. This is a really cool feature that Adobe added to an audition. And you just simply enable remix. It will take some time, but then you can see here your target duration. And you can click and slide to a specific duration. So let's say I want this track to be exactly 30 seconds long. I simply type that in and then it will automatically remix the track and shorten it. And if you just give it a listen here at these little breakpoints, these jagged lines, you'll hear that it's pretty, like, almost perfect. So you won't hear any audible cuts or anything, you know, screw ups that you would otherwise get if you were just mixing these together yourself. So this is a great way to shorten your tracks to fit a specific target length. Now it's not always gonna be perfect, but as you can see here, it came in at 32 seconds. And that's also including this tail here. So if you put your time marker here, you'll see we're at 28 seconds, you know, just about 29 seconds, and you've got your 30 second track. So this way you could use this for a 30 second video without having to just end the track abruptly. So then I just simply bring the track into DaVinci Resolve that I remixed in Adobe Audition, and let's just uh, unsolo this, and then we've got a finished piece. Got him opening the door, closing it, starting the car, and then off we go. All right, guys, that wraps it up for the sound design breakdown. That's it for this series for the Cadillac CTSV. However, if you guys want to see more breakdown videos just like this one, please do me a favor and let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you learned something from this video and you got some value from it, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media because in the end, that's how you're gonna help Driven Films to grow. Also, I'd like to personally invite you guys to join the Driven Films Discord channel. That's where you could chat with myself, other filmmakers and car enthusiasts and like-minded individuals. So you could find a link to the Discord channel down in the description below. But most of all guys, please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Until next time, take care.